So we're gonna let the bed down on the tow truck and we're gonna see if we can flex this thing out. So most vehicles, they have two drive shafts, sometimes three, but the world's largest off-road limo has five drive shafts. That's right, five. VoltorqueDriveShafts.com came through. They got us our drive shafts for the limo. We got an intermediate shaft going from the transmission to the transfer case, from the transfer case all the way to the front end, from the transfer case to the carrier bearing. carrier bearing, and then we got two more sections to the rear, and then we have one more section to the rear end. That's five drive shafts. And today, we're gonna show you how to put these in. We're gonna take you along on an adventure, how to install five drive lines into the world's largest off-road limo. We've got a laundry list of stuff. Actually, let's go check our list. All right, take a seat, class, because we got all this to do still. It's a lot of things. We got the power steering pulley to install. That's Owen. We got to check the trans fluid. That's Owen. We got the four by four shifter. That's me. Rear bumper, eh, we're scratching that. We're not putting a custom rear bumper on this yet. Roof rack, eh, we're scratching that. We're not putting a roof rack on because we don't have time. Drive lines, that's Robbie and Hillbilly. Coolant overflow bottle, that's me. We got to do that. We need to align it. Decals, we ordered the decals from Design to Print out of St. George, Utah. They're going to be here in the next couple of days so that we can decal this whole thing up and make it look awesome. Exhaust, that's a question item. We don't necessarily need it. And it clears everything, so why? It does, yeah. It just might sound really cool. We got a lot of stuff to do. The boss can't get in it, so we're gonna make it easy on her. And we're gonna get a step stool. I can get in it, it's just not easy. All right, so she needs a step stool about this height so that she can get from there to there. We also have a brake line that we haven't got. Oh, just kidding. Look what just arrived. Cody went over to AutoZone and got us the brake line. Then we've got, oh, we've got to bleed the brakes. Gotta write that down. Bleed brakes. That's a big one. He's putting in a 10 spline spicer. I don't know the U-joint size. And then we'll start getting drive lines in. Disaster setting in. Okay, we have coolant over there, power steering fluid dripping here. I bled the brakes and I bragged about how clean I could keep it to Cody. And then this happens. I literally told him it takes five seconds to keep things clean. And here I am with the biggest disastrous mess I could have possibly made. One thing after another. But we're gonna get it. And we're gonna get this thing to drive. All right, it is the next day. We were gonna start on the limo, but AutoZone failed us like they always do. And we don't have a power steering line till the end of the day. So that's gonna have to wait a minute. So we're back on the Bronx Star. Now, we're gonna build our continuous hoop that goes back here. And that's gonna be the center support for every bit of our case. All right, so we've got the first two bands of the main hoop done. So we're gonna put it up in place and we're gonna figure out where our secondary bends go. We gotta figure out a little bit different angle. 72 degrees wasn't enough. So I think we're gonna do 74. Yep, we're gonna do two more degrees on each side. Can we just reach out to each other and pull nope. ourselves together? That hurt myself. All right, so we're gonna load this back in the bender. We're not perfect, but we're close. All right, so Hillbilly is gonna get up into position again. That's one thing we're coming experts at, is up and down and uh, removing and installing. We might have to bend this side a little sharper. So this is the third bend on each side, because we've really been doing our homework on this one. And we've been taking this class serious. We're gonna finish up this band and see if it touches. We're not perfectly symmetrical either, but it's close enough. Pull up there, I'll hold down here. We'll make it symmetrical. Closer. All right, we're gonna leave that. Symmetrical. I think that's pretty close. Where we're connected to frame rails, that's close enough. I'm gonna call that a win in my book. Whoa! Oh, trying to more? Yeah, wrong button. Wrong button, it's only a two-way switch. <laughs> now we gotta try to get it out. Ha, huh, look at that, look at it, came right out. We're most definitely not perfect, but that's pretty dang close. So we're only off <laughs> just a little bit. One side, expertly cut off. We might have to trim them just to pair. He's gonna notch in here, cut the sheet metal out so this bar will fit right in, but it's fitting and that's what matters. And then we're gonna build the front bars. All right, so we gave up on the Bronx R for a little bit because we got everything to get the, the old limousine running and driving. So we are going to build a transfer case, see if we can get it to start, bleed out the power steering, and then we're gonna go drive it, because why not? 
Then we'll get back to the Bronx Star. We've got the gear oil completely filled up. I'm gonna get it plugged up and see if this thing will start. 10,000 pumps later? Yeah. We're gonna get this thing to start and then we've gotta to try to get it out of the shop. We're gonna need a step stool. Why didn't anybody think of that? And why didn't anyone think of that? Ready? I'd be out of gas. Put five string foot in it. But I hate to have the Armstrong knees. It's getting yeah. everywhere. Out of where? The cap, I think. But it's all probably overfilled, and now it's foaming and yeah, pumping uh, fluid out. They fired up again. False alarm. It did look like it was sticking up right. Trash case must be in neutral. You see the drive line moving. I put it in reverse. No go. Does the drive line stop? Yeah. Try to click it into gear. That's. I need four wheel drive. Go ahead and try Bar. it. Bar. I need front. Want me to try it? We're in four wheel drive. Oh. It moves. Oh. And it has brakes. That's good enough to go to the gas station. <laughs> All right, so we've got it into two-wheel drive. So we're gonna get the go jacks, get this thing spun around and get out of the shop. <laughs> okay. The world's largest off-road limo moves with ease and grace. Whoa! It just went. All right, I'm getting in the driver's seat. Oh, look, you can just put your butt cheek right here. Nice little slide. We'll slither in. I'm gonna need tow mirrors for this. <laughs> so weird. Is everybody in? All right, so we've got everybody loaded in the world's largest off-road limo, and we're headed to Mavericks to get some gas. If we make it, you'll be you'll be on call. Okay, I'll be on call. Okay, we ready? <laughs> There's Mitchell. We are going, going, going. <laughs> Well, so far, so good. This is so high. Holy cow. How are we going to get this into a stall to get gas? It's making some weird noises. We're not oh, getting in there. We're, getting in there. <laughs> we're going to have to go around now because that lady took our spot. No, oh, don't come this way. We're going to get stuck. I can't turn it. We got no turning radius. Thanks for much. Just buy a gas can and fill it. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna make a 20 point turn. It's okay. You definitely need four wheel steer. Keep coming. Keep coming. We're gonna need a backup camera. <laughs> now, hopefully, the gas cap is on this side. It is. I know for a fact it's on that side. Gotta... We're gonna fuel it up. How many gallons? <laughs> it's empty, so it's gotta be like 25 gallons. All right, so it took 18.8 .8 gallons. Let's get back to the shop. He's got some serious flex to it. Let's get the fucking stop it. That's just the suspension. How fast does your speedo say? 54 miles, 50, 48. We're almost dead stop and it says we're doing 35 miles an hour. We're going 65 miles an hour. 25. Oh, that's perfect speed. <laughs> now you're going 81. 33. We're going 80. 33! 81 miles an hour! It handles really nicely. Look, we're, hey, we're straight down the road. I think our alignment's fairly decent. Oh, wow, we're going 102! Okay, we're going 102! And 380 miles to empty. This will make it all the way to Mobe. All right, so I'm gonna call that a success. For the first drive of the limo, couldn't ask for it to do any better. We've got a fuel leak, a power steering leak, a major whine in the transfer case. Transfer case leak. Can't transfer case leak, but you know what? It made it down the road and back. And that's all we could ask for right now. Tomorrow is a new day and we'll address the situation. We're gonna try to see if we can rebuild the transfer case, tighten up the leaking power steering line, the fuel leak, 
that's that's a major one. So we're gonna let the bed down on the tow truck and we're gonna see if we can flex this thing out. We're gonna back it up because we got a little bit of a fuel leak. We don't want it to leak fuel out. So we're gonna back the driver's side tire up the tow truck ramp and just see how, how much flex we can get out of it. The ram broke. The tube come out, the small tube, the little ram, it broke. Well, better to break here than on the trail, right? So now we got time to get a new one. So, are we flexed out yet? No, you got more now that he broke it. Okay. All right, let's see if it'll come down. And there's no nitrogen in them. Oh, look, it's coming right back. We got a few days, so okay. I'm gonna just drive slow over there. It's not All right, one good news ballistic fabrication has two of these in stock, so we'll order one up in the morning and we'll get the coils put back on it, and we should be good for Moab. Hey, ballistic has two brand new ones in stock. Watch out, it's my Is it even broken? Yeah. Well, it's a little tweaked. Yeah, it's off. Is it hitting right here? On the side? I'll bet it just blasted into it. Scraped it. I feel like we're leaking everywhere. <laughs> the is gas there? is leaking back there. Uh, all right, so Owen got the, the new power steering line on and we think we've got it all fixed. Cycling both ways, it's not leaking, so that's a plus. We've got a brand new ballistic 16 inch coil over coming. We've overnighted it for tomorrow. The reason it broke is the lowers didn't have enough room. So we're gonna cut them off, move them out, space them so they got a lot more misalignment, and then they won't break on the trail. All right, so today is Wednesday, and if you guys are in Moab, Utah, you're at the Easter Jeep Safari. So head over to Rory's shop from 2 to 8 p.m. tonight and come and meet us. And while you're there, check it out. We've got some new shirts. We've got the Bronx Star shirt in black with yellow lettering. And we have the brand new Robbie Layton Nation shirt in gray with our original logo. And there's more. We are now introducing a sticker pack. We got the Bronx Star sticker. We got the Blowtech and Static sticker, a limo sticker. Check this out, that thing is just awesome. We got the That Ain't Going Nowhere sticker, and we got our flagship. We got the Robbie Layton Nation sticker. Make sure you head over to Trailmater Shop, 2 at 8 p.m. tonight. If you're not in Moab, you're gonna wanna tune in on April 14th, where we do our brand new merch drop. We're gonna be doing a live stream where we're releasing these shirts and selling these sticker packs. So, April 14th, it's a Friday, mark your calendars. We're gonna be doing a live stream. We're gonna be giving away some awesome products from our sponsors, and you never know, we might just do some fun stuff, so tune in. Currently at this moment, I am pulling all the trim out of it, the visors, the oh crap handles. I don't know what they're really called, that's what I've always known them as. We're pulling all the trim out of it so that way we can get the roll cage built and have it tucked up and tight as to, against the sheet metal as possible. You can't take a chance of putting your hand up there to hold yourself and squish your fingers. So we've got the center bar in the back all installed. It's clamped up here, but that was just to get it square. So we're at the same angle as the front bars. We've got it tacked to the sides. Now we're gonna build off of that cage and go down to the dash bar and then figure out a front bar. And then we're gonna pull it back out, put all the bars back in fully welded. And we gotta tackle this back. This back is freaking me out because I don't know how to do it yet. It's gonna come to me. I know it will. Can make it look like a spider web. We'd make it look like a spider web if we didn't have literally two days to get this done and we don't have a fuel system in it. It hasn't started, we haven't driven it, we haven't tested it, we haven't broke the gears in. Um, two days, we're already in Easter Jeep Safari. Oh, that's true, we're already here. Oh no, did we get done? Oh no. So I got all the interior ripped out, less fire hazard. Now Robbie can work on the bends and the roll cage because that's his cup of tea, not mine. And I'm gonna get wiring re-ran for the fuel pump, tail lights, and the fuel tank for the fuel gauge. I'm gonna use my handy dandy gauge that I finally figured out how to use. And I'm gonna get the angle of the dangle that I need. But we're gonna have to cut some of the structure out to get it up in there. 
this is the coil pack. I'm just cleaning all the grease and oil off of it because uh, it needs to be grounded good. Just wanna make sure it has good ground. I built a metal bracket to mount to, that this will mount to, that will weld to the cross hoop bar so it's out of the way. It's not stretching the wires to plug it in. All right, so I've spent a good portion of the entire day and I've bent two, three, I've bent four bars. I've got to bend one more bar and then I'm gonna have this entire center section done to my liking. We're gonna put two bars in the middle with about a six inch gap in between them. And then I've got this side door bar, that side door bar, the front windshield bar, and then I'll feel pretty good about this inner roll cage. So there's that bar. This door bar and the center bar that I'm gonna make one more of. That's a real hefty weld you got there. That bracket ain't going anywhere. <laughs> That's what happens when little Linkster sets the welder up for Hillbilly. Gets a little bit extra wire. No big deal. This is the bracket he was talking about. We got that all made. The coil's gonna mount to it. It's gonna ground, that's for sure. Yes, it is. That's some sweet road bike handlebars. That's right. So I got my handlebars out of the inside of the cab and I decided I'm gonna weld them on the bench. That way I can get a full penetration weld all the way around it. And then we're gonna put it back up inside the cab and actually weld it into all the tubes in there. So I'm just making sure that this stays at six inches. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this bar in here, and just throw a little baby tack. All that's gonna do is keep this square while I weld. All right, so I've got it fully welded, put back in here. Now I'm just gonna tack these bars, make sure they're six inches apart. Jeez. Until it's getting late. It is. All the interior bars are bent, packed, and where we want them. Now we gotta try to figure out the back portion, but it turned out pretty good, I think. All right, so we are bending an entire 24 foot length of inch and three quarter in the JD Squared Bender. So this is gonna be the rear hoop that we've gotta get. It's taken up like the entire shop. So we're gonna bend it to 67 and a half degrees on both sides. Then we're gonna put it over there and figure out where our 22 and a half go. I gotta move the bender with the pipe so it fits in here. All right, there's 67.5. Bad idea 101. All right, so this is exactly what not to do when bending pipe. So we have like no room. Look, we're stuck over here. We're stuck against the Bronx Star and we're only at 39 degrees. So we got to figure out how, how to get out of this situation. Sawzall? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we really could. We don't need a 20 foot chunk. No, but we don't want to cut it off yet. Anyway, we're going to at least get this bend. Hey, we're right, time to clean the toolbox off. Keep going, it'll, walk. Yeah. it'll push it all off. All right, so we've only got seven and a half degrees to go. That's it, donkey. Any more, it's all over the Well, it's probably for the best. We need to clean no, it No, it's anyways. not for the best, because who's, guess who has to clean it up? Me! That's a fine idea. So it's not for the best. All right, 67 and a half. We didn't even hit. We didn't hit there, and we didn't hit here. I thought we were supposed to go to 77 and a half. 67 and a half. Because 90, 22 and a half off of 90 is 77 and a half. 30 off of 90 is 60. All right, internet, do your thing. So 90 minus 20 is 70. No, 80. It's 70. 80. See, he even agreed with me. You guys saw it first. I won't even critique him. So we've got our big humongous 24 foot hoop that we don't need this long all in position. We've got it on stands and blocks and Hillbilly's back there counterweighting it. Anyway, so basically all we're doing is we're trying to get it in, a, in position so that we can, we can figure out our mark to do the 22 and a half. And then from that, we're gonna go forward. We'll probably be able to cut the, we'll be able to trim the fat. So when it goes back in the bender, it's not gonna be as difficult, but we weren't sure. I told you so. You done did tell me, Hillbilly. Against all odds, we got all our bends in our rear hoop. One hoop. All right, so for some of you that are wondering how you notch a big humongous thing, that is how, right there. Takes two people. Takes two people. You level it up and you throw a notch in it. All right, so this rear section is coming together. We've got the main hoop, the rear hoop, and tomorrow we're gonna start adding bars. But it's late, we're tired, so we're headed home. So it is tomorrow. So it is the next day and we're getting the rear hoop all built for the back end. We had to reposition the hoop that we put in last night because we had it about an inch too high on one side. But now that we've slept, 
we can think straight. So I'm gonna start with doing two 90s on this and then we're gonna get our rear hoop that holds the back to the frame. All right, now we have a big U. Oh yeah. And that is gonna be the back of our buggy. All right, we've got our last notch for the back piece and then we're gonna test fit it and hopefully it just fits. Perfect. It really is. It's like it's perfect. And we'll just ratchet strap this tight. I think we're gonna end up just welding this straight across. Cause we're eventually gonna put a tailgate in here and make this functional. So right now I'm rerouting the wires and plugging all the plugs back in that was unplugged and putting harnesses in that was took out that we need. Today, we're going to attempt to start it. There will be no attempting. We're starting this thing today. We're just sucking this down to the frame so that it's even all the way across and nobody blink. Oh, so now that we've got this tied in, we just need to bring some bars back. We're gonna make a spare tire carrier, a bar here to tie in the strut towers. We gotta to mount the fuel tank somehow. And then the old Bronx Star is gonna be ready to wheel. It's actually gonna look so cool. Are I'm you... actually really excited about this. So we're gonna make another one of these right here. I feel like four and a half would be perfect. I've been doing some math quackulations. In order for this to go four and a half inches down, I figured out where it goes. I've used a speed square. I'm doing things really, really backwards, but it makes sense in my brain. But right there, I was able to get my 14 and a quarter off of center marks. We're gonna go put a 75 degree bend. So we'll be able to notch it out and get our bar that goes right here. So that's the second thing. And then we'll start tying it all in. We're probably gonna follow through with these two bars. We might do some X bars. I don't know, some expose. I don't even know what that means, but. Well, here comes the moment of truth. Make sure that it still cranks over, that the wiring's all, I got it all ran, tucked up out of the way. We're gonna see if it goes rah, 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 rah. Wait, what is it gonna go like? Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> but it won't go rum, because we don't have fuel lines. Uh-oh. It's not going rum. Well, this might be the problem. I couldn't remember if this wire was a ground or if it was a positive. So we're going to stick it on a positive lead and see what it does. That has to be the wire. I may have found the wire. It's a nice, heavy, thick one that goes with the ignition wire. I'm sure it runs ignition or power to the ignition. Hmm. Well, why yeah, isn't it? Who told you not to cut all that? I didn't cut nothing. It's unplugged. Plugs, see? Here we go. Round two. Or three. He did. All right, so we just got these cut it did. So we're gonna go test fit this and see what it looks like. So this should go right on. Our math is a little bit off. All right, we finally figured it out. We had to overbend, so we went to 80 degrees. That's okay. Nobody will ever notice that there's a difference in the, except for me, because I can see it. But that's fine. And all of YouTube. And all of YouTube. All of YouTube will know too. Oh. It has to be super symmetrical and super precise, even though none of it's precise or symmetrical. Check three times. Whoa! Right there. Don't move. Forward a tiny bit. More. Oh! Less. Oh! More. My shoulder's getting tired. Hush! <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take all day. We're only 1.1 degree off. We're gonna call that good enough. So I almost got the wiring done for the most part. I won't know for sure until we get fuel lines ran to fire it up. Robbie, for some reason, he's letting his OCD get the best of him. He's make, trying to make this look perfect, which in my case, it's beyond perfect. It's a build that I wanted to do. My dream's coming true on building me a rock crawler out of a little Bronco 2. Robbie is going beyond or overboard on everything because just look at this roll cage and he's nowhere near close to being done with it. It's turning out really, really awesome. And I really appreciate Robbie helping me build this so my dream can come true. This is beyond what I could have ever been able to accomplish and I am really enjoying the outcome. I just can't wait till it's done and we can go out and crawl it. It'll set in like this, and then this will sit right there. And that will be where the battery sits. 
This is the crap that I've been dealing with all day. So I put a bar in, I think it looks stupid, and so now I feel it needs a bend. There's that bar. It could be welded in, but I think it looks stupid and I think it needs to come out and then have a kick down right in this area. I think it needs a 10 degree bend. What do you guys think? I think all that I see are Chad's fab stickers everywhere. It's like everywhere I turn, there's a new Chad's Fab sticker. I think that you guys need to go tell him and Stacy that it is on. Like Donkey Kong! <laughs> Chad! Stacy. <laughs> that was uncalled for, Chad's Fab. I have 10,000 stickers, and they're coming for your shop, Chad. And Stacy! It is on! Let's see if it works better. <laughs> thousand times better. <laughs> that is literally so much better. It looks the same. It looks better. And this is my first attempt to the notcher. Because Mr. OCD has to do it so that way it's perfect to his eyes. Ay, ay, ay! Yeah! <laughs> Got a level, I'm just gonna tack it in place so I can figure out where the battery box is gonna sit on there. I think right there is gonna be the ticket. All right, so what we've done, I ordered up a kit. It's called Hot Rod Fuel Hose. I actually saw it on Instagram. This is not a paid sponsorship, but this hose is freaking awesome. This whole process takes about one minute of fitting. Proceed to twist. It's never coming off. This is high pressure fuel line. Hey, Robbie, what's the max pressure it will hold? Uh, enough for the Bronco. Anyway, so I'm gonna finish up this line. I'll get these fuel hoses installed. We're gonna put some gas in this old Bronx star and see if it'll start up. Are you dialing the welder in, Lincoln? Look, little Lincoln's working on a Miller. <laughs> How funny. So I had to put an, a reducer from 8 a.n. to 6 a.n. because this RCI tank was for an 8 a.n. fitting. We have a 6 a.n. kit. Okay, so I had to make a new positive line. All I gotta do is just heat shrink one side and it's done. Is this one ain't long enough and it's falling apart. So, so I'm gonna finish heat shrinking this one and then I'll install it. All right, so we've got the battery installed. Hillbilly got that all taken care of. We've got the back all caged in. We still have to do some lower bars. We've got the fuel line, the return line. We've got all of the stuff that hopefully we can make this thing run. We're putting some gas in it. We're gonna try to fire it up and hopefully it starts because tomorrow's the last day. So we're gonna get this to run and drive. Hopefully it'll go in gear. And then we're gonna focus on finishing up as much bars as we can so that we can get this thing to Moab. All right, let's see it. No fuel pump. What's wrong, Hillbilly? I think there's a wire I forgot again. What's that? That's why I don't remember if it's a ground or not. I hear the pump kicking on. Okay. Give it a shot. We had air in the fuel line, pump it. What do you see? <laughs> well, one thing's for sure. The pickup is about an inch off the bottom and it takes about a gallon to put a half an inch on the bottom, so we're definitely not picking up any fuel. I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it. I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it. Woo! -hoo. All right, hit it. There we go. Yep, yeah, there it comes. I can hear it. Yeah. Okay, hold it. We've got fuel. Okay, hit it, hillbilly. Now we're gonna see if the 
gonna move! Your brakes killed. Baby blood a bit more, they're spongy. Told you I was coming from my wiring. To make you excited? Oh yeah. Can we yeah, try it out? Do you know what that means? We're going to Moab! We're already there. Oh, I mean, sorry, we're already in Moab, but we're gonna be going on trails. Um, anyone else remember to check the oil? Cause I didn't. You don't need oil. All right, so we're headed to Moab. We're already there. As always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.